Hey nerds, Sage is here. So, uh, I have not slept yet. Um, it's mostly because, well, yeah, I, I just haven't slept. <laughs> I was up thinking about things, think, looking at stuff, talking about stuff, wanting to understand what's going on. Last few days for the YouTube hasn't really changed much, the YouTube, um, but I have felt that there was a bit of an odd change lately, and I kind of just, I don't know. Uh, it kind of made me freak out a little bit, but that's just how YouTube is these days, you know, between, um, copyright, um, not copyright, but, uh, ad things where it's just like, oh, it's not suitable for any audiences, even though, for the most part, uh, which is odd, like, some, some of my Fire Emblem Heroes videos get hit by it, like, consistently, yet I typically don't curse too much or do anything too crazy. And this isn't necessarily too violent, but uh, I guess that's just how it is. Yet, the Metopia thing, where we talk about all kinds of other nonsense, uh, that is very mature, ends up somehow not getting triggered by it most of the time. I don't know how that works. You know, YouTube's YouTube. But, uh, between that and the re <laughs> that I realized I had not taken a break in uploading in almost... A long time like I'd say last time I actually took an effective break from the day from day off was before heroes actually came out and that was back when the channel was not doing well and I felt like I was a failure and a disaster so naturally when things change and things alter and after I got all these great people who just started showing up I think I started to panic a little bit thinking, oh god I'm not gonna be able to take it but um, so I just wanted to tell you guys that right now um, my plan currently is to get to choose your legends, which should be out on the 31st, and, you know, we'll be covering a lot of things that are coming out over the next, you know, few, like, month, I, I'm, I'm assuming that's what's gonna happen, because usually, you know, choose your legends are gonna be a big deal, and they're gonna have a lot of interesting things there, but still, um, uh, but, it, you know, after that, when things start to get slower again, I'm probably going to take a break from YouTube entirely for like, uh, I wouldn't say a week, but a few days, you know, something to just take and relax because uh, maybe just stream a bit, maybe not worry too much about uploading because things have been chaotic and weird and just all sorts of odd things, but, uh, oh man, that's, that's a whole other issue. So, man, I, I guess we'll just, uh, you know what, um... Trying to look at and think about what I'm gonna. Ah, uh, boy. <laughs> Anyways, I figured I would cap this video off instead of being depressing as hell. Someone asked me, "Hey Sages, how do you build your Innis?" Because I want to know. Um, or is it Innis? No, I'm kidding. Innis. Um, how 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 exactly would you build him? You know, what would you really do? Well, <sighs> just to give you a proper idea. This is my Ennis at max level. Um, you can get the better idea of what his stats are. He doesn't have any skills right now. Um, as you can see, he has his SP ready, but I haven't touched him just yet. Working on the details, I was debating what I was going to be doing. Um, the thing about him is that he is a very interesting character because he has resistance, which is a very key stat for him. Um, makes him very very defensive against certain mage uh, units, which is crazy. Um, that's something that, that a bit of an ad <laughs> yeah, something that he has a bit of an advantage over, say, Bridal Cordelia, because he has that resistance. So, honestly, a lot of very interesting things can be done here, um, when talking about him. So, if you happen to have one like mine, which is, I believe, Speed, speed plus, defense minus. I, I could be wrong entirely, but that's, that's the current one I have. Actually, yeah, speed, speed plus, defense minus. That's, that's how you know. Um, I want to generally just kind of avoid using life and death. Um, I'm going to of course replace this Nidhogg with the Brave Bow because, that's pretty much the go-to bow right now. And as much fun as Nidhogg is as a bow, it's actually very good and very interesting. Um, it, it works really well if you don't happen to have, you know, a Brave Bow unit lying around, but hey, why not? Um, so, 
I'm gonna go with Rave Bow, most likely. And from there, I'm probably going to not use Life and Death, which is probably something that someone's screaming blasphemy at, but Life and Death is not something I want to touch because I don't want to touch his resistance stat too much because I have some ideas of what I want to do. Um, generally, <laughs> I mean, the only thing that you can really do here, if you really want to, I mean, I guess you can go with Death Blow or Fury, but I was thinking Swift Sparrow for my A slot. Those are, that's a good option because it's, you know, a nice mixture of attack and speed at the start of battle, you know, which if the combat, you know, is initiated by him, which generally as a Brave Bow user, you're doing that anyways. I feel that's a good alternative to just trying to do life and death. And that way I can run something that's a little bit more interesting like uh, Iceberg or, you know, Glacius if I really wanted to, or maybe even just do Luna like some people seem to really like throwing around with him. And that's just my idea. And of course, B slot is desperation because desperation is something that, well, all the bow users, all of the mages use because it is such a nice ability to be able to attack and kill your unit, or kill your enemy, not your unit, uh, before any enemies actually hit you, which is great. Um, and then finally for C slot, I'm actually gonna go with something a little bit crazy. And I know this might sound weird, but bear with me, okay? Because this is gonna be crazy. I've actually found a unit that can use a defense ploy that isn't asked. I know, right? But now, really. Um, defense ploy is actually a very viable skill on our good friend Innes here because he typically can hit, you know, a pretty high, st I would say, stat for this. Um, you could probably go even more with, um, uh, jeez, just, I mean, is, that's why I kind of don't want to use, um, life and death is because that would hurt that. I kind of want to try out doing defense play with Swift Sparrow. And then, you know, trying out with Brave Bow and seeing how well that would go, because that seems like a pretty fun thing to have. It's, it would be really nice for an archer like him, because typically archers don't have the resistance, outside of maybe Niles and... God, I can't even think of anyone else right now. Um, and even melee units, usually the bigger, bulkier ones that are really speedy, typically are really bad at resistance, and having more defense ploy is always fun. But other than that, if you really don't want to, you know, go with that, Threatened Defense is always the second best option, or just the best option, because, well, that's what I use with, that's what you should be using on any archer that you're trying to run a quad build on, or running for higher power DPS, because it just works so well. Um, Threatened Defense just really can change the course of battle, and I would strongly suggest that if you don't go with, uh, you know, <laughs> if you don't go with, uh, blah, 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 you don't go with defense ploy. And also, if you really, really want to, you can always just go life and death. If you don't happen to have a resistance that's over 30, untouched, or, you know, um, if it is touched, you know, it's, it, you have a boon in it. I mean, if you have a boon, you have a bane in it, you will, uh, probably, you can probably run life and death just fine and not worry about it. It does get rid of some of his uniqueness. But that's not a bad thing. I mean, it's not like it's gonna hurt too much. He, you could always go Fury with your A slot, and that's just my ideas, because honestly, Ennis is a pretty hefty mage. There's a reason why he is the second best unit only to Brydelia. He can be strong, and in fact, in some situations, he can be stronger than Brydelia. And I'm really looking forward to trying to build something with him, but that means, unfortunately, that I'm going to have to sacrifice my Katarina which um, I was planning on taking up, but I think, honestly, right now, I'm pretty happy with Celica and maybe Atharja if I really wanted to. As much as I like Katarina, I think I may actually end up making her eat someone else. <laughs> so yes, that was my, uh, that was with that one person who asked about Swift Sparrow, I mean, not Swift Sparrow, Ennis and Swift Sparrow was the option that they wanted to talk about, and well, there you guys go. I'm going to title this video, I found an actual use for defense ploy. But anyways, um, outside of Est, of course. But really, um, I hope you guys will understand if I do take a break a little bit, uh, really tired, and, you know, all that fun stuff. But Innes is a great archer, so if you do get him, and if you do have a 
few more days, four or so, to try to roll for him if you decide to. So yeah, there you guys go. I will catch you all later. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.